Hey everybody, my name is Richard Hawk Hawk and Tolo Mua. Those are the sounds that you hear and the things that you see when you see someone practicing Buddhism. Um, as the disclaimer states, I am not a monk. I am not a kumu, a teacher of any sort. I'm just a guy. I'm a guy that's been practicing Buddhism for 37 years since the age of 18 years old. Um, I am also a professional tour guide. So not only have I uh, gone to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of temples, um, but I've also dove, delved into a lot of uh, sutras, um, debates uh, with monks and things like that. Um, I'm just a guy with a lot of questions. I'm just a guy that um, that uh, wants to to uh, to better myself. Um, so when we, and, and, and I'm going to do this, um, I don't know how many parts this is going to be. I haven't divided it out. I'm just going to try to put the information out there for the regular Joes and Janes that want to learn a little bit more about Buddhism. And there's going to be a, people that are going to debate it and say shit and they can do whatever the hell they want. Um, it is what it is. The, um, <clears throat> so let's just get into it. You know, because in Buddhism, and I'm not just talking about Buddhism in general because 95 percent of the people out there that claim that they're following or practicing what the historical buddha taught i mean the exact words of the historical buddha of this particular world not buddhas of other worlds because the shakyamuni siddhartha gautama or gautama siddhartha or whatever you want to call him is, is is of this world we're not talking about the other buddhas that he talked about okay those are other worlds talk about this world you don't clean up your shit in this world you don't go to other worlds okay because this is the Saha world okay um, so uh, the Saha world means the world of suffering and if they're not following what Gautama Siddhartha said you know most people call them Shakyamuni and, 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 and it was it was it rules it was just advice so they, that that's what I debate you know oh hell there i said it so i, I i've said it to hundreds upon hundreds of monks and i'll say it it's a hundred more monks if necessary whether it was in india where i went china thailand cambodia indonesia korea uh japan all over the place um they're all nice at first they allowed you to come in sit down make yourself some you know comfortable they give you some tea and they're all nice in their robes and they sit and they talk and then you start asking questions Hey, if you ask the right questions and they can answer, that's okay. But you start making them nervous. They start sweating, losing their robes, take back their tea, ask you to leave. Don't come back. Sucks. <laughs> and I don't ask anything that's not outside of the sutras. And the sutras were, were taught in order. Okay? They were taught in order. So the, 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 the first teaching after his enlightenment. Okay? And then the last teaching. To the Nirvana Sutra was only taught for a day. It, it, this is, you know, and w what I focus on is a teaching he said to follow in a period of time, you know, a thousand years after his death, another thousand, another thousand, in the latter day of what we call the law. And so this is what I focus on. No, I don't like talking about that because you're going to bother their, uh, <clears throat> you know, their, their, their structure. And what they've committed their life to. You know, all I've ever done in 38 years since 1983, since I encountered these teachings uh, that I practiced, is try to do exactly what, what needs to be done in order to attempt in this life, lifetime to attain enlightenment. Period. Okay? I don't give a shit about anybody else unless they're in trouble. You know, if I see a homeless person or an elderly person or a child that needs my help, I will do what I can. But I don't go around like a missionary and say, well, you're, you're Buddhism. You know, I, when they invite you for debate, I'll go and I'll talk. And then I usually, uh, you know, get, you know, kicked out. But that, that's okay. You know, I mean, they'll believe me. You know, my family, my own family, because I'm looking at me right here, right? They, they've got some bad karma. None of them will admit it because as Buddhism teaches, you can play in hell long enough that you come to think of it as a playground. You don't even know you're in freaking hell anymore. Okay? All right? But not this guy. 
I saw it from the get-go. I was always wondering why I was born in these circumstances and why other people are born in their circumstances, good or bad, you know. And, and, and you know, even though you're surrounded by a certain amount of love and, and joy, you know, I knew. I just, it just it ain't right. And, and uh, we were born in, in a, a Christian household and all that barbaric Hebrew superstitious crap and all that stuff. And, and if you get mad at me for that, well, then just get mad because all that's just religion that was built to control people, okay? That's all it was. Um, Buddhism is not a religion, just a way of life. And, and it teaches 2,600 years ago, teaching about the universe, you know, major and minor world systems and things like that. It's pretty damn impressive. And it's how to, 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 to teach you that everything that's in the universe is within you. Well, hell, that's what I want to know, you know. And I'm sure that, that, that you know, everybody said, well, there's just yours, just a different way. I don't give a shit because I'm not trying to convince you. I'm only making this. Uh, number one, to get this shit off my chest. And number two, there may be somebody else out there who says, you know, you know, I hear of all these monks about Buddhism, and I, I want to know, not that I'm going to practice Buddhism, but hey, this guy seems like he's pretty down the freaking earth, and he'll tell me a little bit more about it I can understand, and, and communi communication I can understand without telling me, you know, uh, if you've noticed the light at the on the candle uh, is lit, then the dinner's already cooked, Stargate shit, you know. All right, so, but, you know, it's just in, in layman's terms. First of all, Buddhism is a bitch. There you go. Uh, in this world of suffering, according to the historical Buddha, we're born here because of karmic circumstances that we've accumulated in the past. Yes, past lifetimes. Now, if you can't get beyond that, you might as well turn this damn thing off already. Past lifetimes. And I know I've lived hundreds of past lives. Very easy. Uh, to, not very easy. I shouldn't even say that because it's a bitch. It, you, you start to remember if you take the time to focus on it. Now, let's just talk about focus just for a second. You live your life, and you can live your life from the birth to death and not go work out one day, not go jog, not go work out with weights, not do Tai Chi. You can do the whole, your whole entire life. But you know that if you went out and worked out a day, like just for just shits and giggles. Let's say you go out and work out one day. In the next couple of days, you can utilize muscles that you didn't know you even had. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt like a son of a gun. You're going to like, damn. And that's the same way with our, our consciousness. You know, we have a conscious, a subconscious, and, and then you, you have the part of your brain that connects to the universe. And you can't connect this part of the brain to the universe. There's just too much damn info out there. It's going to overload, right? So you got to have that cushion. We have our dreams and our conscious. We have these things that, that are always constantly connected, whether you're dead or alive. And where there is no death. Because after, after your death on this earth, your actual life is there you're just here because of karma circumstances so anyway i don't want to get too deep there i don't want to lose any of you so with that said just having a seeking spirit just trying to a few moments out of every day try to focus on stuff so meditation is really really good because it just calms you down. You listen to yourself, breathe. You can, you know, and they say you get angry for you get angry. Calm down, take four deep breaths. And lived in Hawaii a long time. Kumu always said, stop, take four deep breaths. You know, and you go, okay, now I'm, I'm a little more cooler, you know. You, you'll take that time because we're just so damn busy from the moment we wake up. Turn on the news and this. I got to make breakfast, go. The kids got to go. Bam, everybody's out the door. I go to work, blah, drive, honk, honk. Get Starbucks, go here, there. And then do my work and then all that. Then meet my friend for lunch. Come back, come back, dudes. Make dinner, pom, pom, and go to bed. So your mind is going 24-7. Yes, even when you're asleep. Now it's all the dreams and things and anxiety you had that day. And, and, and you know, they say, and I don't know because, you know, I um, spent a lot of time off the grid. Okay. You know, in the Grand Canyon in Arizona, um, days you just sit there and you hear nothing. You know, it took it took an hour or two to get the ringing out of my ears. The bell, the bell, your eardrum is like that. You heard the sound. Sound's gone. But that ringing will persist. So if you really went out to a place that you don't speak and you be as quiet as possible, 
the first two, three days, freaking madness because you're just freaking ringing in your ears. And then when that's gone, it gets a little scary. It's like, hey, okay. you can hear stuff far away. But your, your, your mind's going all this time. So it doesn't have time to concentrate on on the things that need to be concentrated on and utilize parts of your brain that you need to to utilize you know hell they say you know the bottom of your feet has two thousand little points that has, has stuff to do with everything in your body right so you should walk barefoot whether it's on the beach or in some gravel or out in the park you know at least a couple times a week it sounds good yep great sounds yep yep sounds good i tell you we should do that and you won't ever do it a year later you go oh i didn't get a chance to go do that because you don't make the time so with that said okay the reason i say buddhism is a bitch it's because we're born into this world most of us anyway not remembering what the hell we are where we came from but if we're clever which is something i've never been accused of well, well i have a couple of times but just very very rarely we can extrapolate and we can analyze our present circumstances get a hint as to what arrangements we're in and then maybe just maybe now we can move to navigate ourselves through the opportunities and the hard times that we experience in life because our experience in something is completely different from this person's experience even though we're having the same experience if that makes any sense people say oh my god this is tough i can't go through this dude i've been through it it's fine i'm going to help you through it okay so we can navigate ourselves through these opportunities, these hard times, all the experience that we encounter to better ourselves for the future. Okay? Now don't get me wrong. There, there are many Buddhas out there. You know, as, as the historical Buddha of this particular world 2,600 years ago was one Buddha. He talked about other Buddhas of other worlds. But everyone, every single person has the Buddha nature. You have ten worlds inside of you. Heaven and hell are not apart from this world. Now, if that's all you wish to go to, if that's what you're wishing, I'm going to have it, going to have it. Be freaking extremely disappointed when you run back around again because you got to do this shit again because you didn't do it right. Hell is right here on earth, and there's 146 hells. There's 126 heavens. There's, there's all kinds of heavens and hell. You can be in heaven doing something you totally enjoy. No, you know, the, 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 turn around, cut your knee on a glass table and be in hell. You know, in a car crash, you're in hell. Baby born in your arms, that's a different type of heaven. You know, right? You have hell, hunger, anger, animality, humanity, and heaven. And most humans live in those lower six worlds. Then you have learning, realization, bodhisattva, which is near enlightenment, and Buddhahood, which is enlightenment. These four worlds, most, uh, most of us don't even take the time to contemplate on these things. We don't take the time to contemplate on that. We don't even take the time to think about how the hell you got here. How many of you met your grandma and grandpa? How many of you met your great-grandma and grandpa? How about your great-great-grandma and grandpa? Now, past that, we don't give a shit. How many of us sat and really thought about our ancestors and, wow, the amount of energy and time and effort and, and all the things that came together to put me here? We don't think about it, do we? No. So you take time to think about your ancestors. and to, You know, it was really funny, you know, 12 years, not funny, but 12 years, you know, it was a Kumu, Kumu Ehulani, uh, taught me a lot. She gave me my Hawaiian name. So she's the sweetest lady in the whole freaking world. Um, she, she would you know, start every prayer, uh, and she'd look out over the horizon and in the ocean, and she'd say, call upon your ancestors. Call upon them and say, hey, look, you know. Because just like a star in the in the sun, everything goes through birth, old age, sickness, and and, uh, and, and, and death. But it's 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 uh, you know transition, everything, whether it's a human, a bug, or a flower, star in the sky, birth, old age, sickness, and transition. So that transition, okay, when a star, for example, a star gets bigger and bigger and cooler and cooler, and then most stars, not all stars, but most stars, um, you know track to blow they blow up right um you know some turn into massive black holes and you know all kinds of things but even though like for our sun that's in the sky 
You know, it's not a stationary star with us running around. It, it's traveling at 70,000 kilometers an hour, and, and we're just hanging on for the ride as it goes around the Milky Way galaxy, right? Well, within, you know, a few hundred billion other stars in this galaxy with about 8 billion planets that have other life. But that star is only about 4 billion years old. Now, if the universe is 13 and a half billion years old that we know right now, well, wait a minute, our star must be born from another star. Hold me damn. That means there was another star around that lived about 8 billion years, which is a normal lifespan, well, kind of a regular average lifespan, that blew up, and they believe that our, our, our star came from M42, the Orion Nebula. Not the belt of Orion, but the little knife area. There's about 3,000 stars left there. So even though stars were ejected and the Orion Nebula during the dinosaur age was really, really big, not the Orion Nebula, but the Orion constellation that we see from our viewpoint, okay, we lived on another planet. It wouldn't be the same viewpoint, okay? So I'm not into all that astrology stuff because if you lived on another planet, it'd be a different set of stars. But anywho, from that viewpoint, Orion's about this big right now. Another 100 million years, it's going to be that, that big. Because every time we go around, we get farther and farther and farther and farther away. Okay? From that particular constellation is what I'm trying to say. But still, even though our sun, like other suns that are even near us, that are from there, there's still about 3,000 stars there. So when you die, it doesn't mean your soul just, bam, leaves the whole body and is gone. My little one, you know, I've got... I've got I got I got kids, my littlest one. It's a little shit. My my middle daughter used to see it and she sees it and she would go, Mammy, me, mammy, me, me, and point off to the corner of the room. And she'd pull me, 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 me. I go, what the hell's mammy? And I'll be damned. One day I'm going through all my pictures, right? Going through my pictures. And I come across a picture of my mom. My daughter's over here playing Legos. And I swipe that picture on. She gets up, me, 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 and she grabs it. And then she points at the picture and points at the corner. Remember, she always calls out Mimi's name. Oh, oh, oh. You know. I got stories, and I'll, I'll, I'll give you stories later. But all I'm trying to do here, okay, is is just say, you know, th these worlds, these you, you need to concentrate. Learning realization. You learn something all day long for a test. You won't realize that for, you know, sometimes a couple of weeks, sometimes a year, two years later, you be doing something, you go, I learned this in school, or I learned this from that person. Oh, I remember this. I've never done it, but now I realize it. So just think about that urofa between learning and realization, and when you get to a near enlightenment, an enlightenment, completely different. So why not take the time every day to try to, 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 to put your body in a habit of, and your mind a habit of trying to have a seeking spirit and think of something outside of yourself that is within yourself that makes yourself mm, let me clarify that you look up in the stars in the sky and you shouldn't think wow I'm small because all of that is in you you're just a part of it it's a, like a little funnel you're 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 it you are it, and you are here. Um, there, Buddhism doesn't teach about gods. A lot of the the temples put up these little statues, and they are a prayer and statue, and and we never said do that, ever. Actually said, don't ever make a statue or painting of me or any of the other Buddhas that I've ever made. But they put them up and they pray. But if you're praying to that, number one, you're praying to it as if it's a god. Well, that's wrong. That's number one. Out, bam ballpark home run they, they ain't even no talk about it because it's wrong number two you're only concentrating on that buddha state of enlightenment when you should be uh, you know you're thinking about all the ten worlds in your life all the ten worlds not just concentrate on one aspect of it because once you start to move that enlightened aspect all everything else will come in but you still are a human being and you have the opportunity to speak and create vibration and the, uh, the, the universe has a vibration. And all you're trying to do for a little bit each day is match the vibration of the universe. 
And if you can do that every day a little bit, depending on your karmic circumstances, you can knock out these bad karmic retribution that was already, uh, when they, people say you're destined, you know, you may have already had karmic retribution for something bad, but if you change that karma, you can change it from negative karma to positive karma and change your life. And you will you'll be able to see things more clearly. And when something happens, when something happens, you'll know, oh my God, I was supposed to be there. I was supposed to be in the siren attack on the, on the train in Japan uh, 25 years ago. Same train, every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Every day. And then that day, something happened. I missed my train. I was pissed. And the train behind me, you know. Plenty of time to go over stores. You know, I watch enlightened people too. Because I, I, I love to hear more information. Anytime I get a chance to hear something, I will. Uh, Sadhguru, he's one of my, one of my uh, uh, people I subscribe to. Um, an amazing individual. Amazing individual, very interesting, very enlightened. Yeah. I myself really don't know until I reach that age if I could actually get rid of all these delusions and anxieties that I have in my particular view of things to connect with that enlightened state of life and that level. But I will continue to do my best. And I will do, um, you know, uh, and I will answer and help in my way that I can. You know, again, um, I don't believe that, number one, any Christian pastor can talk about any freaking thing according to this God because, number one, they've not died and come back. That's, that's number one. Yeah. You die, you're dead for three days, you come back, and you tell me, I'm going, oh, well, shit, don't listen to this guy. You know, and you have all these monks that study, and I can become a monk very easy to become a monk. Hell, my, my wife's mother is a freaking monk. She went to school for four years, and she has absolutely zero compassion. One of those selfish people on the face of the freaking planet. So, you know, all that, I'm a monk, and I'm going to do, you know. And there's, a, there's, there's strict, you know, monk lives. You know, no, no sex, no, no, uh, uh, no, no meat, right? Um, and a life of poverty. And then there's monks that their particular sect will allow them to have families and only show up once or twice. A month, someone once or twice a year, and you can be called a monk. I'm being called a monk. I just do my year thing. I've done all the other tests. I I do this, but yeah, I'm not your your orthodox looking dude, am I? Because I'll tell you just how it is, and and none of this is 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 shit I've made up. It's just words that I've taken out. You know, and and, and this is probably the best way to look at it for me. Uh, in the United States Air Force, uh, I was at a 15. Uh, 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 crew chief, all right, and, and and you have what's called TOs, and then these TOs, they tell you how to fix something, and you say, well, I, I can do that, I've done this 50 times, I don't give a shit, I'm not that kind of person, read the freaking thing, go down the freaking line and do it, that way, if anything, one in a thousand times, that one time, you forgot to put that screw, or freaking do that, or not tight, what, Whatever it can never be called back on you, and that's the kind of guy I am. Follow the freaking rules. So Buddhism <laughs> doesn't have rules, okay? And not, and there's no man-made rules, you know. You do what the hell you want to, but I'm I'm just saying that I'm very particular. I'll, what I read, what I learn, I will research again and again and again. I'll get down to the bottom of it. And then I will inform you. So you don't have time to do that. So that's what you got me for. If you want to take the time to watch my video. So um, that's it for today. Um, I think that's enough. This we go 24 minutes. I wanted these like 12 minute intervals. But that ain't going to work. And I'm sitting in my little house here in Osaka, Japan. And uh, we'll see where it goes. Uh, again, folks, thank you very much. Again, Richard Hawk Hawkins, Holomura. Um, follow me at, at Nihon Tamashi which means Japanese spirit. And, uh, uh, yeah, any questions, let me know. Have a great day.